Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grab a seat, please. Man, what an honor and a privilege to be back uh, at really such a special place for me. Um, you know that when God supernaturally provided for Abraham, he called the place Jehovah Jireh. He didn't call God Jehovah Jireh, though he is. The scripture says when you read it, when God provided for him that ram in the thicket, he calls the place Jehovah Jireh. That's the place God provided for me. You know, when I think of abundant, over the last over 20 years as I would sneak in and I would drive down from the Albuquerque area and I'd drive down to the old building and come to spring convention all those years ago and then have the honor of connecting to the family in the 2000s and then begin preaching here, I don't know, uh, 12 years ago and now been coming and become such great friends with Pastor Jared and um, love Pastor Charles so much and Shannon so much. I, I can honestly say this is, this is one of my Jehovah Jireh's. This is one of those places. Can I get a witness from anybody else that can say, God talked to me at that place. God healed me there. God provided for me there. I was going one area. I was going in one way. I was going in one direction. But then I, I started going to abundant. And God has used this place to change my life. I know that's my story. I know that's your story. And I think we ought to honor Pastor Charles, Pastor Jared, Pastor Shannon. Come on, the entire pastoral staff. Make some noise this morning. So grateful. I want to go straight to the word because I got more sermon than time. And uh, I got a lot to say. Matthew 25, verse 14. Again. Now I want you to think about this word. Jesus is telling us parables, pictures, stories ideas about the kingdom of God. He's letting us know what the kingdom is like. And um, so I want you to open your heart to what the kingdom is like because we are in the kingdom of God. We are a part of the kingdom of God. But many times we do not experience the power of the kingdom of God because we don't know how it operates. And so Jesus is going to share what the kingdom is like. It will be like a man who's gone on a journey. By the way, this is where we're at. Jesus is on a journey. Jesus at the right hand of the Father. One day he's coming back, but right now he is physically, physically the man Christ Jesus in heaven. And he called his servants and he trusted his wealth to them. He's given us talents, gifts, abilities, opportunities, anointings, destinies, callings. He's, he's given us opportunity. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags of gold, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. That's where he's at. He's on his journey right now. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and he put his money to work. Everybody say, get to work. He gained five more. So also the one with two bags gained two more, but the one who had received one bag, he went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money after a long time. This is that day that we'll all stand before God. The master of those servants returned. He settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold, he brought five more bags. Master, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. And in the words of Pastor Charles Neiman, I want to hear well done. I don't want to hear well. You're done. <laughs> Watch this. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Now, the same thing that happened to him would happen to the man with the two bags of gold. But here's what happens to the man with one bag of gold. The man who had received the one bag, he said, Master, I knew you were a hard man. Now, time out. You don't see that Jesus is a hard man at all. He's kind. He's bringing people into his world and he's, he's passing out bags of gold. I've met some generous people. I've never met a person just passing out bags of gold, right? So he's not a hard man, 
But if you think God is angry and if you think God is hard and if you think God is frustrated and if you think God has a lightning bolt in his hand with your name on it, it's going to affect your walk with God. A.W. Tozer, who's in heaven now, he said that what you think about when you think about God is the most important thing about you. So because the man thought Jesus was harsh, it affected his life. He said, he said, I knew you were a hard man, so I, so I hid your money in the ground. See, here, here, here's, what, here's what you gave me, and you can have it back. Now look at this, verse 26. He said, you wicked and lazy servant, if you knew that a harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered, why then wouldn't you just at least put my money on deposit at the bank? I mean, at least get some interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has, and I want you to, I want you to read this because it's a mentality. It's a, it's a mentality of abundance. I have. I have gifts. I have abilities. I have opportunity. I have. God is good, and I have. What you have, even more will be given. But whoever does not have, again, that's a mentality. I don't have. God's not good to me. God's good to them. God's not good to me. God likes them. God doesn't like me. If you, if you think that, even what you do have will be taken from them. All right, a lot of scripture, but this is a Bible church, so we're all good. Everybody, amen? Okay. You've been faithful with the little. I'll make you ruler over much. I want to preach from that idea, and I want to, I want to talk about multiply. Multiply. Everybody say multiply. Father, I pray you bless your word now. Bless our time together. I thank you for this amazing house. And I pray that you would speak clearly and powerfully to every person who's listening to this word in Jesus' name. Amen. If I ask most Christians what was God's command to his first man, what was God's first word to his first man, what was God's first instruction to his first man, most people would think that God's first word to his first man, Adam, was don't eat from the tree, don't touch the tree, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what they would think. Most people think that God's first word to his first man was no. But that's not true. That wasn't God's first command. God's first command to his first man was actually a word of blessing. It was yes. Look what he says to his first man. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. God's first words to Adam were, be fruitful, multiply. Take what I've given you here in Eden and cover the earth with the goodness of God and the blessing of God. That was God's first word, God's first command, and God's first promise. And if Adam would have been obeying God's command to multiply, when Eve would have walked up to him and said, Hey, honey, I was just talking to my new friend, Louis the Snake. No offense if your name's Louis, God bless. And, and he was telling me about this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If Adam would have been walking in the multiplication, the subduing, the, the thing that God told him to do, Adam would have said, let me meet this little snake. And Adam would have kicked him out of their garden because it was not Satan's garden. It was God's garden and God allowed Adam to serve and steward that garden. And we would be in a completely different situation if he would have said yes to the goodness of God. He would have never been tempted with the enemy's lies. Here's what I want you to know, friend. Your life is a garden. Eden is a picture of your life. It's a place of opportunity. It's a place of possibility. It's a place of multiplication. Your marriage is a garden. Your soul is a garden. Your family a garden. Your gifting your career, your future, a garden. It's a place of possibility. It's a place that you must protect, steward, water. It's a place where God walks and it's a place where the enemy roams. It's a place where the voice of God is speaking but the voice of the accuser is lying. It's a place of opportunity and temptation, possibilities and limitations. But it's a place where God gives you this Opportunity. You got to see your life as Eden. 
God provided a garden, the conditions for growth. I want you to think about your life, something to work, something to till, something to harvest, something to protect, something to steward, something to invite God into and something to kick the devil out of. My life is a garden and it can multiply and your life can multiply. So how, how do I walk in the multiplication blessing of God? Well, number one, you have to know this. God is a giver. You got to know this. God is a giver. If you want some, some good theology, some God 101, here it is. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave. I just want you to stop right there. God gives and God loves. God loves and God gives. God gives and God loves and God loves and God. This is what God does. If you want to know about God, he's a giver, not a taker. Hallelujah. Job said the Lord gives and take away, but Job did not have the Bible and he didn't have Jesus. Come on, somebody. We know more now than Job knew. Job thought God took all that away from him. No, he didn't. God's a giver. God's not a thief. God's a giver. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. This is who God is. He's a, he's a giver and he loves you. You got to know this about God. And some of you are sitting here right now going, you know, yeah, yeah I, think, I think God loves me. Yeah, 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 I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah, God loves me. But Jabin, God's never given me nothing. I know people he's blessed, but he hasn't blessed me. I know people he's given to, but he hasn't given to me. I, I know people that, that, he, that he has really favored, but, but he hasn't done that for me. I, I, I want you to know today, no, he has given, and he's actually given you more than you think. But most times, we miss how God gives to us. Okay, I'm talking about the kingdom. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. The kingdom of God is like seed. God's kingdom is like seed. I want you to think about it. God's kingdom is not like fully grown trees. God's kingdom does not come fully matured. When God enters your life, he enters through the incorruptible seed of the word of God. God begins everything in your life in seed form. Do you know that the scripture said in Genesis, God planted a garden. You know what? He's never planted another garden. Once he put down those fully developed trees, he's never done that again. From there, those trees begin a process. Genesis chapter eight, verse 22, a process called seed time and harvest. After God planted his first trees, he never planted trees again. Once God put fully developed, matured things on the earth in the book of Genesis, he never did that again. Now a process called seed time and harvest is here. So when God's kingdom begins to operate in your life, it always starts in seed form. And this is why we miss it, because it's not big yet. It's not awesome yet. It's in seed form. See, I'm a preacher. I'm a, I'm a pastor. So I walk into a church like Abundant, and I go, I want one of these. This is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Lord, let me build something like this. And he goes, absolutely. Here you go. Go start a church in a junior high cafeteria. <laughs> what? No, Lord. I want the Abundant life. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where it starts. Because y'all know Pastor Charles didn't start here 40 years ago, right? Y'all know that? You know him and Rochelle didn't start. They didn't, they didn't start like that. It started like this. But if I'll steward this and I'll honor this and I'll water this and I'll protect this and I'll keep the enemy out of this, this can, be, can become this. You look at a great marriage... It started in seed form. You see great kids, it started in seed form. You see a great business, it started in seed form. What, whatever you want didn't start the way you see it now. And we pray for fully formed, fully developed miracles. And God goes, I started like this. In the book of Exodus, 
Uh, the children of Israel come to Moses and they go, Moses, we are sick and tired of this high protein, low carb, Jared Neiman diet. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen, everybody. Like, if we eat one more piece of salmon and broccoli, we're going to punch somebody. We need bread. Amen. I, can we just say amen for bread real quick? This is, this is body by bread, by the way. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. Amen. Okay. And uh, I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is. Anyway, they go, we want bread. And we want bread now. And, and Moses said, you don't want bread. You're going to get a wheat belly. Gluten's bad for you. You don't want bread. And they go, no, 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 we want bread. Moses goes, okay, well, let me go talk to God. He goes to God. He says, hey, God, they want bread. God says, they don't want bread. Bread's going to mess them up. They don't, they, don't, they, they don't want no bread. It's going to turn into sugar. It's going to mess up their insulin. It's not, it's not good. No, no, no. God, they want bread. Okay, well. So Moses comes back to the people with a good report. Bread is coming in the morning. And the people rejoice, just like you do when you go to that Mexican restaurant and the chips and salsa hit the table and your whole mood changes. You get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You love your family again. You're like, whoa, I don't know what was wrong with me, but yeah, I love you guys. You got to apologize to the waitress. Come on. You're like, you know what? We're really good people. You need to come to our church. Amen. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything changes. And so they, they rejoice. They wake up the next morning expecting bread because God told them bread. And God's not a man that he would lie. So they wake up the next morning. And Exodus 16, 31 tells us this, that they called the food manna because it was like seed. Uh, Lord, we prayed for bread, right? Moses, you told God bread, right? We agreed on bread, right? Yeah. So why did God give us seed? This word manna is a Hebrew phrase. It's not an English word. It's a Hebrew phrase. Here's what manna means. What is it? I'm not lying. What is this? I prayed for bread, manna. God gave me a promise, manna. Preacher, I thought I met the man of my dreams and married the man of my dreams, but I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning and I looked at him snoring, rattling the whole house, and I thought, manna. <laughs> Ah. Ooh, don't look at your spouse now, but some of you men thought you married a fine woman, but, but then she took off the makeup and you went, manna. <laughs> Where'd your eyelashes go, girl? Where'd your hair go? Oh, that was all fake, boo-boo. Manna. <laughs> Man, I thought I moved to El Paso on a word from God, manna. I thought I, thought I was taking the right job, manna. Man, I thought God was doing so. I thought God gave me a promise. What is it? It's what you prayed for. It's God's provision. It's the blessing of God. But it has come in a form that you did not expect. Because here's what they had to do with the manna. They had to take that manna and bring it home. And they had to meal it into flour. And they had to add water and oil. And they had to bake it. And they had to do something with it. Because God is saying this, I don't make bread, I give seed. Oh, but there's power in the seed and there's power in the opportunity. See, because if they would have woken up to stacks of bread, their faith would have not been stretched. So God goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes because I'm a yes and amen God. But I'm going to grow you in the process. So I can't just give you fully formed answers. I'm going to give you, here, here's what I've learned about God. He gives me opportunities. He gives me ideas. And he gives me commands. 
most of the time when I pray, I don't get miracles. I'm not against, I love miracles. I need a couple of miracles right now. I have friends who need miracles. There are people in this room who need miracles. We believe in miracles. Okay. But even the miraculous, read your Bible. Always connected to ideas, instructions, and commands. I'll just give you a couple. There's four lepers who are in a drought. They're in a famine, and they have an idea. What are we doing here? Let's, let's go to the enemy's camp, and maybe God will give us a victory. They had an idea, and then God gave them a miracle. How about an instruction like Naaman, who God says, dip in the river seven times. He got a miracle, but he had an instruction. How about a command like, rise up, pick up your bed and walk. Every miracle in the Bible is connected to ideas, instructions, and commands. So we pray for bread and God gives seed. We pray for fully formed miracles and God gives us ideas. And what we end up doing is missing out on the miraculous because God gave it to us in a form we did not expect. And let me remind you of something. John chapter 6, Jesus shows up to the first century people and he says this, I'm the manna that came down from heaven. And just like Israel missed the manna in the wilderness and Israel missed the manna in Jesus, many people today in 2024 missed the kingdom because the kingdom comes in a seed. But don't be, I'm not, I'm not here to discourage you. I'm here to encourage you that you're probably closer to your answer than you realize. Maybe you just haven't realized it yet. God's a giver. Number two, you've got to steward what he gives you. He gave one man five bags of gold. He gave one man two bags of gold. He gave another man one bag of gold. It, it, none of them got to decide where they started. But they all had a responsibility with what they were given. Some of you were born into an amazing, faith-filled Christian home. Glory to God. Others of you have never even met your father. Some of you were born into poverty. Others were born into addiction. Some of you were born into violence. It, but, but here's the reality. No matter where you were born, and no matter where you started, we all now have seed. And I can't change my past but I can decide my future. Oh, am I pre- man, I feel the gift of faith in this room right now. Your best days are still in front of you. Your blessed days are still in front of you. I believe God's going to do more in the next six months of this year than he's ever done in your life. Come on. But I gotta, I've got to steward the seed. I've got to steward the seed. Here's what stewardship is. Stewardship is choosing to honor what I have now and make the best decisions I can about my future while not getting bound up and discouraged about my past. And every one of us can do this. To be a steward, you're going to need a vision and you're going to need hope. And you get to do that because you are a child of God made in the image of God. See, you get to do what animals cannot do. Animals live completely by instinct and appetite. The people of God get to live by vision. See, I have a little dog, a little dog named Bentley. Here's what what I know about Bentley. Whatever I put in front of him, he's going to eat it. Because he's a dog. Right, we had, to, we had to teach our daughter, you can't give the dog chocolate because he will eat it with a smile on his face and die. <laughs> but you could give him chocolate, you could give him filet mignon, you could give him a carrot. It don't matter, he's going to eat it. He's a dog. That's what dogs do. Dogs live on appetite. You know, another thing about our dog, I don't want to be too crass at this beautiful sanctified church, but before, before we fixed our dog, before we... <laughs> Um, he, he assaulted our entire home. <laughs> it could be a cushion. It could be a knee. It could be a barbed wire fence. It, it didn't matter. I'm just telling you because he's a dog. 
And that's what dogs do. You're not. You're not an animal. You are a steward. You are a human made in the image of Almighty God. And you don't have to just make decisions on appetite, sex, right here, right now. You get, make to, you get to make decisions based off of future. You get to see the smallness of right now, but know that there is power in the seed. Let me remind you of three things about this seed. If I eat this seed, it dies. No farmer eats their own seed. Because if I eat it, it dies. And by the way, here's another thing about eating seed. It'll make you sick. Number two, if I store this seed, it's dormant. See, if I, if I put this in the back room over there and I anoint it with oil and I pray in tongues over it and I play the new abundant worship music over it and if I plead the blood and cast out devils and remove the strong man and invite the spirit of God and put a prayer shawl over it and I can do all I want to this. It's never gonna grow. It's dormant. But if I'll sow it, This becomes dynamic. <laughs> and so many of us end up eating our opportunities or storing our opportunities or procrastinating our opportunities or complaining about our opportunities. But if we would sow our life, if we would give our life away, if we would do something with whatever God has put in our hands... That thing would become dynamic. Come on, everybody shout multiply. Come on, help me preach a little bit. Multiply. I did not start where I'm at now. I'm in my 40s now. And my God, it just feels like the blessing of God is really flowing in our life. I, I make no apologies for it. I'm, I'm in awe of what God is doing in my life. I'm in awe of what God is doing in this church. But it didn't start like this. You know, I just signed a book deal with Thomas Nelson, the largest book publisher, Christian book publisher in the world. You know what? Psst, don't tell them. Do not tell them this. I have a GED. <laughs> and I had to take that GED twice. They said, you want to write the book or do you want a little help from a ghostwriter? I said, I might need a little bit of help. You know, I don't know. Let me pray about it. <laughs> I don't know the difference between a comma and a period, but I'll tell you this. If you would have saw 17-year-old, 18-year-old Jabin Chavis failing a GED, you wouldn't think he would be publishing a Christian book with the largest publisher in the world. If you would have seen little Jabin Chavis with an extreme lisp, that could not say his essence to save his life, you wouldn't think he'd be a preacher today. If you saw that young man that was all addicted and bound up and full of religion and full of hate and didn't believe in God, and you wouldn't think I'd be doing this today. It started small. It started in Belen, New Mexico, population 1,700 people at a trailer park. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud of it. I'm not trailer park trash. I'm trailer park royalty. <laughs> but it didn't start like this. These mega church pastors, these pastors with these big old church, these pastors with these fancy clothes, these pastors. Da, 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 da. You, do you know how hood I am? Do you know how ghetto I am? <laughs> Started right here. And, 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 and by the way, now that I'm 40, and now, guess what? I'm still sowing seed. I'm not stopping. I'm still giving my life away. I'm still doing everything I can to help and serve and love people. It started small, but I stewarded the opportunity. Lastly, you got to know this about God. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Pastor Jared told me something in the green room. He goes, he goes do you realize that in 30 minutes... You just told people how the kingdom works. And for some people, they're going to go, done deal. I'm in. I'm all in. And other people are going, eh, eh. it's like, 
It's so simple you can miss it. Because the seed is so simple you can miss it. But the kingdom is a seed. Lastly, lastly, little becomes much. You've been faithful with the little. I will make you ruler over much. And we don't like the little and we despise the little and we talk down to the little and we complain about the little and we wish we had more. But if I would steward this, it won't stay little for long. Do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Do not despise means to dishonor, treat with contempt, to talk down to, to speak evil of. Do not speak evil of these small beginnings. See, that man with that one bag of gold was comparing his opportunity to the man who had five bags of gold. And he despised what he believed was the smallness of his opportunity. And we can live our entire life angry at what we were not given that other people were given. And we will end up wasting our entire life complaining about all God gave me was a seed. But can I remind you that there is not just one seed in this seed. This seed will not just produce one seed or one plant, or one piece of fruit. This seed, within it, is an orchard. Because within it will grow a plant that will grow fruit, that will produce seeds, that will produce more plants, that will produce more fruit, that will produce more seeds, that will produce more plants, that will produce more fruit, that will produce more seeds. This is not a seed or one piece of fruit. This is a garden. And so is your life. And you have to rejoice in this, steward this, work this, and watch what God can do in it. This, this, this one apple, if we cut it open, would have some seeds inside. And here's what I know about this, and here's what I know about the kingdom of God. I can count the seeds in an apple. But I cannot count the apples in one seed. <laughs> Am I preaching to anybody today? You know, we're going to do, I'm not, we're not talking about giving today and I'm, and I'm, and I'm not, I'm not making a push for this, but you know what? If I, I thought about that food warehouse that y'all are doing, I thought I got to give, I got to give. I have to give. I got to be a part of the next fridge. that's going to last 40 years. Come on, somebody. I have to. Because for the next 40 years, every time someone gets food from that fridge, I get a harvest. It would be so foolish of me not to get behind that. Every time that machine takes food around and drives around that forklift, moves food around, I get to be a part of the miracle. Because I can't count the harvest in this seed. I can't count the harvest in my prayers. You don't know what's happening every time you wake up and you get to church. You don't know what happens every time you open up this Bible and you read it. You don't know what happens every time you get in the car and you play praise and worship music and you pray, cry out to God and you pray in the spirit and you lift up the name of Jesus. Every time we do a kingdom endeavor, it is a seed that is producing a harvest in our life. And it might not be much now. Just remind you of this. In, in the Old Testament, there's a man named Elisha. And a woman comes to him and says, I need a miracle. We need money. And if I don't get money to pay off my creditors, they're going to take me and they're going to take my sons and they're going to sell us off into slavery. I need a miracle. And you know what Elisha does? Elisha asks this question, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. What do you have? What? Who cares? I don't have money. Yeah, but what do you have? I don't have enough, but what do you have? I don't have enough to pay off my creditors, but what do you have? I don't have cash. What, what do you have? I need a miracle. 
But what do you have? I don't have provision. But what do you have? Do you see this? This is frustrating. Man, the kingdom of God can be frustrating to us. Because <laughs> I feel like the Holy Spirit's asked me that before. God, I need a miracle. God, I need you to do something. God, I need you to break through in my life right now. God, I need you to help my marriage right now. God, I need you to do this. And God's like, so what do you got? I don't want to talk about what I got. I want to talk about what, I've, what I don't have because I want to complain. Amen. <laughs> and he goes, what do you have? And I love her response because it's so real. I don't have anything. Nothing at all. And I think Elisha looked back at her like, real, like nothing. Nothing. I don't have anything. If I was born in that family, if I had their genetics, if I had their money, if I had their this, if I had their but I don't have anything. You don't have anything? And I think at this moment she realizes, wait a minute, this is the guy that can like command bears to come and eat me. I better give him a better answer. <laughs> Old Testament, amen. It was a, it was a different time. Uh, she, <laughs> she goes, um, well, well, I have a little bit of olive oil. See, Elisha knew what she did not know. Elisha knew and God knows that what you lost was painful. But what you have left is powerful. She lost her husband, but she still had oil. And Elisha said, start pouring out that oil. And God took her not enough because it was not enough. And he made it more than enough. And God will take the little you have if you will steward it and work it and tend it and honor God with it. And you will walk in the Ephesians 3.20 exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. And you kind of blink and you go, I don't even know how I got here. You got here because you honored God's kingdom, God's process, God's ways. And when I'll honor God's ways, God will honor my ways. Come on, if you believe that today, let's give God a great shout of praise today. Your best Days are in front of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I promise you we're going to dismiss you in two minutes. Please stay where you're at and close your eyes because I need to ask the most important question I've ever asked. I need to ask you the most, in question, most important question you've ever heard, and it's this. Do you know Jesus? Do you know this one who so loved you that he gave up his whole life for you? Do you know this one who died on the cross just for you? This one who rose from the grave just for you? This one who loves you and has an abundant life for you in eternity and right here on earth? Do you know Jesus or do you just know about him? For others of you, you used to walk with God, but you've walked away. You've, you've gotten distracted, maybe discouraged, maybe tempted, or something has happened in your life and you need to return back to God. If that's you, would you pray with me right now? Jabin, I need to place my faith in Christ. Or I need to come back to Christ. If that's you, pray with me. I'm going to ask every person in the room, pray out loud with me. All together, everybody say, Jesus, I believe in you. I place my faith in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you, Lord. Just would you close your eyes one more moment, just in this sacred space of prayer. Jabin, that's me. That was my prayer. It's, it's like we just prayed that just for me. I know there's thousands of people in this moment, and yet it was like just me and God. That was my prayer. I'm coming to Christ today, or I'm coming back to Christ today. If that's you, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see you. And I want to recognize you. You're not only raising your hand for this moment, but it's like you're reaching out to God. And I believe that as you raise your hand, it will feel like a million pounds has been lifted off of your shoulders. I believe God is lifting that shame and that condemnation off of you forever. And you will know that you're a child of God. I need Jesus. That was my prayer. I'm coming to Christ. I'm coming back to Christ. If that's you, raise your hand. One, two, three. Let me see your hand all over this room, all over this room. Thank you, thank you. And I want to recognize you. God bless 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 you. I see you. God bless you here. God bless you. God bless you. 
here in the balcony. Let me see you. God bless you. God bless you. All in the center. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. So many. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you here. I see you all over this room here. I see you all up in the balcony. God bless you. All up in the very back row. I see you all the way up there. More importantly, God sees you and God is, God is sealing this moment by the power of his Holy Spirit. God is doing a work in you right now. Jabin, I didn't raise my hand and I feel like I should have. Go ahead right now and do it. We've got, we've got just 30 more seconds. I need to raise my hand. Would you do it now? I see you right here on the front row. God bless you here. Anybody else? God bless you there. Anybody else? You know what? I froze, but I should have raised my hand. I see you, young man. Keep your hand raised. We're going to get to you right now. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? I'm responding to Christ today. I'm, I'm coming home today. I'm returning back to the love of Jesus. Anybody else? Fantastic. Man, so many people saying yes to the Lord today. Let's celebrate with all those who are saying yes to Jesus. Wow, what a word from God today, amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, would you stand to your feet? To those of you that prayed, hopefully our ushers gave you a little card. It talks about following Jesus. Uh, We'd love for you to check that out. You can scan that on the screen. But in the lobby at the Connect Centers, we have a book for you with the same title. It's our gift to you, also a Bible if you need one. Please go get that book, read it. It explains the decision you just made and what to do next. What do we do after we make Jesus Lord of our lives? We start reading the Bible and we come to church, amen? Come back to church. Let us help you in your walk with God. Lift your hands towards heaven before we leave. Repeat after me, say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come in and I'm blessed when I go out. Everything I set my hand to do this week will prosper. I have the mind of Christ. I am graced by God. I am loved by God. I am healed by God. I walk in his favor. This week is going to be a great week. Come on, say it like you mean it. This week is going to be a great week. Good things are happening for me because Jesus loves me. No weapon. No weapon, no weapon 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 formed against me will prosper because greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give God a shout of praise in his church. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week. See you Wednesday night, next Sunday.